Hi there and welcome into this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching how you can create a ability that's going to be creating a magnetic field somewhere in your world. So let's say our character is able to create a magnetic field like this one that's going to be attracting objects just like that. So this is the magnetic field that you're going to be creating. Of course, if other objects approach this field, it's going to start to be attracted as well. In this video, I'm going to be showing how to create this magnetic field ability. And for that, I'm going to be using the third person template. Uh, and then I don't have anything created yet, so let's start creating. So, first thing to create this ability, I'm going to our third person character, blueprint BP third person character. If I use the first person template, it's going to be basically the same thing. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is to, uh, first thing is that I need to create an object that's going to attract the other ones, that's going to have this magnetic field. Actually, instead of creating the ability itself, let's create the object first. So let's go to our content drawer, content, right click, blueprint class, let's just select actor, and this one is going to be our BP magnetic, like that, open this up. Uh, I want a small visual representation, so for that I'm going to be adding a component that's going to be a sphere, like that, but I'm going to scale it quite a bit down. Let's try with 0 0.2. Yeah, that's better, let's just take a look about how this would look in the world. So this is basically it, of course, uh, you can use this to use your own static meshes and create effects on top of that. I'm going to just be showing how you can create the ability itself. So for that, uh, now with this created, I'm going to our event grab, actually here in the viewport, I'm going to be adding a component that's going to be Ice Fury Collision, this one over here. So this is going to be our sphere number one, placing our defaults and root attached there. And let's scale this quite a bit. Uh, let's actually just select it here. Let's try with 6, 6 and 6. So I was thinking about something like that. And the way that I think about this is that I'm going to be attracting an uh, object into, this, uh, into a, this magnetic field. But the closer it is from this object, I want to increase the velocity of the attraction as well. So I think I'm going to be creating two fields, but for now just use one. Then let's go to our event grab. With our sphere selected, I'm going to get on component begin overlap like that for our sphere number one. And then we'll do second. And then I'm going to just get move component two like that. And I'm going to just be set over here. The first thing that you're going to notice that this is going to work, but I need to make a few adjustments on this. Uh, the target relative location is going to be our, let's just get actor location and just place it here for our object. And I'm going to make it is in and is out. And this is the time that's going to take. Let's try with three at the start, compile it, save it. So now I'm going to have this object in the world. If I approach it, I should start to be attracted to it, just like that. This is the attraction field, but I need to make a few modifications. For testing, I'm going to be creating a sphere and placing our words to so just place actor, select a sphere, get a normal sphere, place it in our world, and then just get this down over here. That just as to adjust the sphere, the first thing is that I want to simulate physics and then I want this to have overlap events as well. So just make both that true. Now let's go over here and if I push this ball forward, it should start to be attracted to that field, just like that. So now let's make it a little, a few modifications to that. The first one is that I don't want it to attract our character. Or maybe you want to do that, it's up to you, I don't know exactly why you want this magnetic field. But for this case, I want our character to launch this magnetic field and not be attracted by it. And I also, I think I'm going to be creating a tag to not attract our, our actor itself, because it should have some books. I'm going to test this out, but if there is, I'm going to be adding two tags for that. 
So for our other actor, I'm going to just search for if has actor hashtag. And then from this actor hashtag, I'm going to just search if the tag is player. And then I'm going to get a branch over here. Place this over here. And I actually don't want to attract uh, the actor if he has this tag of player. So instead, just place this on false for move. Just like that, get a root node over here and then another one down here, like that. But I need to add this tag to our character. So let's do that now. So that's going to be P, third person character. And then over here, uh, you can just go into class, uh, class defaults, then search for tag. And then add the tag player, like that. Compile it, save it, and should be good. Should be, I think now should not be attracting our character. So if I approach this, I am not going to be attracted. But if I know the object approaches, he is going to be attracted. Just like that. So the thing is that, as I said before, I think I'm going to be using uh, two fields for this. Not going to be only one collision sphere. It's going to be two. So let's do that now. So here in our viewport, I'm going to be adding another sphere, collision. This is going to be sphere two. Attach this to our defaults and root, like that. And I think for the sphere number one, it was scale of six. For the other one, it's going to be, let's say, 12. Like that, so it's quite bigger. Let's compile, save it. Now here in our event graph, I'm going to get on component begin overlap. Uh, actually, on component begin overlap like that. Please be careful. This is for sphere two, not for sphere one. Make sure that you get got the right right event for this. Then just copy this and paste it down here like that. And then our other actor into actor hashtag, the component into here. And yeah, that should be it. And actually, I'm going to be changing the time. So here, I think maybe let's say five seconds here. And here, let's say one second. So that increases the speed. Compile it, save it, and let's test this out. So now it should be slowly attracted and it's going to increase the speed. There is a small bug. I think I can fix that very easily by just going to the first event and removing the is in just like that. And for this one, I think I'm going to be removing the is out. Compile it, save it. Let's take a look again. So it should go slower and then increase the speed just like that. So this is our gravitational field. Our, uh, our actor is not going to be our magnetic field. And now I need to be able to launch this object. So for that, let's go to our repeated person character. And over here, I am going to get um, a random key, let's say E key. But you can, you can use any key that you want. I'm going to just be getting this key for, in, let's say, interaction or something like that. And I'm going to also get our follow camera. From our follower camera, I'm going to get word location. Then I'm also going to get forward vector. The forward vector, I am going to multiply and right click this. And this is going to be for a float. Let's make it something like, um, let's say 5,000 for this. Something like that should be good. Then I am going to add into here. And then from this event, I want this to spawn actor from class. The class is going to be our BP underscore magnetic, like that. Into our spawn transfer, I'm going to right click and I'm going to split this struct pin just like this. And then for the location of this, I'm going to just get actor location or I could just get the start location that should be good as well. Uh, ah, actually not, sorry about that. I'm going to be getting the forward vector for this. Uh, so just get this uh, this value over here. So that's going to get the location and I'm going to increase it a bit on the forward vector. That should be it. Yeah, should work fine. So now let's compile it, save it. 
I think he's going to have a small bug where the ball is going to be moving around. But let's see. If there is, I'm going to be fixing that. So now I'm going to should be able to spawn that ball. And maybe if that 5000 was a lot. Let's try with 500. Compile it, save it. Yeah, it is moving around. I can see that. I was thinking that could happen. So to fix that, I am going here in our BP magnetic. I'm going to class defaults. Then I'm going to search for a tag. I'm going to be adding the tag, let's say object. And then in our event grab of our BP magnet, I'm going to be creating another uh, actor hashtag. So just get this one, get another one down here for the actor like that. This tag is going to be object. I am not going to be using a end boolean, it's going to be a or boolean. So either one or the other. So just place the first value here and then here. And then into our condition. Do the same thing up here and it should be good. Like that, the value here, into here and here. Yeah, that should be good. Compile it, save it. Let's take a look now. So if I spawn that, it's going to be fixed on the location. 500 was just not enough. Let's try with 1000. Compile it, save it. Let's take a look. So now I'm able to spawn these fields. I don't want this to be moving around, so it's going to be stuck there. So I could spawn fields like that. That's going to be attracting objects, just like that. So that's basically what I want to be creating this magnetic field ability. So now our character can just rock around. We can have multiple objects and just be placing fields just like that one. That's going to be interacting with the objects. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Visit train.memetinteract.com and enroll into this course to get all source files. Use coupon code MEMETY to enroll for free.